Okay, we'll do a little, a little review here on the graphs of trig functions. As you can see on the left, I have the three parent functions for uh, cosine, for sine, and for tangent. Cosine's in green, sine's in uh, pink, or whatever that color is, and tangent's that's supposed to be a purple there. Notice here that the uh, cosine and the sine functions are very similar. They have that sinusoidal characteristic of the wave there. Whereas with tangent, because tangent is the sine of theta over the cosine of theta, there's possibilities that your denominator can be zero. And you notice here in brown, I've drawn some dotted lines. Those are vertical asymptotes at pi over 2, at 3 pi over 2, at 5 pi over 2, negative pi over 2. And that goes on forever. And also notice that you get a complete cycle in pi, whereas with the other two graphs, you have a complete cycle or period in 2 pi. In 2 pi. This being 2 pi here. All right. So if you know these, you have a chance to graph those. If you don't know these very well, you're going to be uh, struggling to get these graphs out. So the first thing I would do is if I'm given a graph, as I am in problems uh, 45 and 47, of sine or cosine, I determine the period and the amplitude first. That's going to help me right away. So in 45, I'll start with that. Notice that the constant that's times the trig function which they usually refer to as like the value a when they write it as y equals a times the sine of b times theta minus uh, h plus k where you have all the different transformations including translations here okay that a in this case is 4 the absolute value of a is the amplitude so the amplitude is going to be equal to 4 here, and that the period is also affected because this value b affects the period of the graph, and in this case, even though it doesn't look like a nice constant there, this is the same as 4 times the sine of 1 half theta, so your b is a half, and what you do is you take the period of the uh, parent function, which is 2 pi, and you divide it by b. You take the period of 2 pi and you divide it by the absolute value of b, just in case b is negative. Well, if I take 2 pi and I divide it by a half, 2 pi divided by a half, that you invert and multiply, it's going to be 4 pi. So the period here is going to be 4 pi. Now look at my graph here. I can get a complete period in 4 pi. And I also am going to have highs and lows not at 1 and negative 1, but I'm going to have highs of, or here for, for sine, for 1 and negative 1, but I'm going to have highs of lows 4 times bigger because my amplitude is now up to 4. Now, there, is no, there are no translations of any type. There's no phase shift. There's no vertical shift. So I know that my uh, y-intercept uh, here at 0, 0 is not going to change, so I know I'm at 0, 0. Just here, uh, yeah, we'll use green. Or, no, it's sine, we'll use pink. So I know I'm here at 0, 0. I need my key points. That's one of them. I need my key points. And then I'll just make a nice smooth curve. The highs, the lows, the x-intercepts. Well, remember, it's going to have a period of 4 pi. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to end up here. And halfway in between, oh, not here, 5 pi, excuse me. That's a mistake. 4 pi. I'm going to end up here. And you can see that halfway in between that period, I have another x-intercept. And I know that my graph starts out going high and then drops down going low, so halfway between the x-intercepts, I'm going to be at amplitude 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to be way up here. And halfway here, I'm going to be way down here. Now, you could plug uh, values in. Like, for example, if I plug 3 pi in, all right, and I plug 3 pi in right in here. 3 pi divided by 2 is 3 pi over 2. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 4, there I am, down here at negative 4. You can actually substitute the values and make yourself a t-chart. But if you get these four key points, you can save yourself a little bit of aggravation in time, especially if it's a long test. Oops, I missed. And, and definitely use a pencil so that stuff like this doesn't happen to you in pen. And it would continue going this way, ad infinitum. 
Well, I'm going to guess he's probably only going to want one complete period graft. That's this guy here. Notice, I do the stretches and the shrinks, the dilations, the vertical stretch and shrink, the horizontal stretch and shrink, which is the amplitude and the period. I do that first. If I have more, like if I have some translations, kind of like problem 48 sitting over here, he's got some translations, I first graph the, uh, the stretches and the shrinks, and then from there I translate it and just make like two graphs, one graph on top of the other, and then erase the first one. So I would erase that, would have erased that. Well, let's drop down here to 46. This is a uh, tangent here. Now the period for the tangent function is pi. And notice here that the number that's times theta is one, so b is one, so that the period does not change. The period is still, period is still gonna be pi. Well, what does that do to me? Well, that tells me I have to get my ruler and at pi over 2, just like with the original, because tangent is the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. At pi over 2, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So that's why we have a vertical asymptote there, because you can't divide by 0. And I don't know how many of these I would actually need, but I'll just go ahead and I'll put in this last one here. Now make those dotted. Actually, I probably should have this go out a little bit. That's all right. We'll just, we'll just roll with it here. Now, what does the 3 do? There is no amplitude for tangent, because tangent goes up forever and ever and ever. So there's no maximum, there's no minimum. Remember, amplitude is the maximum value minus the minimum value divided by 2, right? So there is no max or min. So but the best I can do is I can think of this as a stretch that's just going to like, you see how these kind of flatten out? It's going to make it skinnier looking. It's going to go up higher uh, a little bit more quickly. Now, you could plug in, for example, if you plug in uh, pi over uh, 4, the tangent of pi over 4 is the sine of pi over 4 the cosine of pi over 4, which is actually 1 times 3. So I'm way up here, actually. Oh, let's use what color? Purple. Uh, I'm up here at 3, oh. instead of at 1, and so my graph is coming, it's, it's much steeper. It's still going to go through 0, 0, but it's much steeper. That's not a very good curve looking thing there. So it's going to go through here, but it's going to be much steeper here. Almost skinnier looking kind of a thing, like that. At 3. At three, yeah, it's three at three, negative three. So it's much steeper. And then you just try to give it that tangent look of that wave or that, that bend in the graph that goes down. And that's probably going to be good enough for what he wants. Now this guy, number 47, he's a little bit like number 45. It's uh, in this case it's the cosine, so I'll grab the green one. Okay? But uh, there's no translation here. But the period is affected because of this 2, and the amplitude is affected because of this 3. Because of that 3, my amplitude is 3. My period is going to be 2 pi, the original period of the parent function there, divided by b, which is 2. So that's going to equal pi. Now, notice that means that I've got to do a complete cycle. Like, see here, I'm st starting up here like 0, 1. And I, it goes to 2 pi 1. Well, I got to do a complete cycle within pi from here, from here to here. Now, my amplitude is 3, so I'm not going to start out at 0, 1. I'm going to start out at 0, 3. And I have to be back at pi 3, which means halfway in between. I got to be down here at negative 3, which means halfway in between these is where I cross the x axis. So my graph. It's just going to kind of like be squeezed and stretched a little bit here, squeezed in horizontally, stretched in vertically. And so I can continue this pattern for as much as I want. Just try to be neat and not rush through it here too bad, too badly. Well, like I'm starting to do. For sine, for cosine, 
the highs, the maximum values, the minimum values, and the x-intercepts. Boy, you get those points, and you got a you got a definite pattern that you can uh, continue. All right, now this 48, 48 is a little bit like 50, and even a little bit like 49, which I don't have space for. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and work out 48 there. But watch the pattern. And what I want, uh, let's see, what are we doing here? Tangent, so that's purple. I'm, I'm going to first rewrite this. I don't like this form. I like this form, like this. So that I can see what my phase shift is. So I'm going to rewrite this as one half the tangent. Then I'm going to factor, I want this to be just theta, so I'm going to factor that 2 out. Now that's a plus. Now when you factor a 2 out of pi over 2, it's like you're dividing pi over 2 by 2, and pi over 2 divided by 2 is pi over 4. Now if you're not sure you did that right, just distribute in your head and see if you don't get right back to where you started. All right, I got a lot of stuff going on here. All right, this one half is kind of kind of flatten my graph a little bit. Remember how this one got kind of skinnier? This one's going to get a little, a little fatter here. This two is going to affect my period. This pi over four, that's my phase shift, and since it's a plus, it's pi over four to the left, and the minus one's my vertical shift. First things first, I'm going to graph this part, the one half the tangent and the two theta, that part, like this plus pi over four and this minus one weren't even part of the problem. So, oh, I don't have my scale written down here. Oh, that would help. I'll make that a one, and since I've got to move by pi over four to the left, I think I'll make each one of these pi over four here. So that's pi over four, pi over two, that would be pi, that would be three pi over two, that would be two pi. All right, now, I mentioned before that the period is affected by this 2. Now the period for tangent, the parent graph, is pi. So if I divide that by 2, that's the new period. Now pi over 2, remember it goes to 0, 0 here, the original. And you see how it's like the, the asymptotes are halfway uh, in both directions from the 0, 0 from the x-intercept. Half the period this way, half the period this way. Well, my period is now pi over 2. So, what that means is I have halfway and halfway, I have pi over 4. So, it is as if, and I'm going to draw, I'm just going to kind of freehand this. It is as if I have those as my asymptotes. Now, what does the half do? Again, it kind of flattens it, and it's, you know, with this many transformations, he ain't gonna, he's not going to get that crazy about it. But you would have, and this would occur. Now, I'm doing this in black because my final answer is going to be in purple here. But it's as if it looks something like this. Because as fat, as, you know, as squeezed in as it is because of the half, because it's squeezed in this way, it's going to kind of give it the same overall effect as far as how flattened or how skinny it is. Now, that's all I'm going to put down. Because what I want to do now is take this, move it pi over 4 to the left, and down 1. So I'm looking for some key points to move pi over 4 and down 1. All right, pi over 4 to the left would mean that this thing would go about here. And I would have a vertical asymptote here. And this vertical asymptote would be right here on the y-axis. This key point here would be pi over 4 to the left, and then it's minus 1, 1 down. So now my graph looks like this. Oh, that's kind of messy. That's this piece right here. Pi over 4 uh, to the left, 1 down. And I just keep repeating this process. So I've got a vertical asymptote here. It's now going to be here. Right, and then this point is pi over 4 to the left, 1 down, so it's going to be kind of a skinny looking guy like this. Now, that's hard to read, so you would do your teacher a huge favor if you took your eraser, and like what I'm doing here now is I would erase the original graph that I put down that only involved 
uh, the, the uh, dilations. And you have your graph here, and then you would just continue this process as far out as he wants it to be. There's a lot of stuff in that one. All right, 49 and 50, kind of the same thing. Um, I'm just going to leave those uh, for your uh, fun and enjoyment, but uh, this should hopefully give you some insight on what to be looking for. Remember, you must know your parent graphs to have a chance to graph at these, uh, these other uh, variations, transformations of the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. All right, practice, practice, practice.